While Republican House lawmakers are questioning whether the Biden administration politically interfered in the census count. Last week we discussed how blue states lost more House seats than red states when it comes to reapportionment, but it wasn't by as much as official estimates had predicted. Congressional Republicans, including Representatives Jim Jordan and Andy Biggs, wrote about their concerns to Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo. Here's what they said, quote, The apportionment population results released by the Census Bureau are strikingly different from the population evaluation estimates released just months ago on December 22nd of the year 2020. For example, New York was estimated to have a population of about 19.3 million, but was attributed an apportionment population much greater than that of 20.2 million, a difference of nearly 900,000 individuals. Likewise, states such as New Jersey and Illinois experienced large population increases of hundreds of thousands of individuals compared to the December estimates, while states such as Arizona, Florida, and Texas experienced large decreases from the, the December estimates. All in all, Texas will get two more members of the House, while Colorado, Florida, North Carolina, Oregon, and Montana each get one more seat. When it comes to losing representation, though, California, Illinois, New York, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia all lost one seat. Join us now to discuss why some are taking issue with the methodology used is Hans von Spakovsky from the Heritage Foundation. Welcome back, Hans. Thanks for having me. Grace, you argue this whole process actually defrauded American citizens because of the inclusion of right. illegal aliens in this count. Talk to me about some of your concerns. Sure. Joe Biden, one of his first executive orders was telling the Census Bureau to include all aliens, even if they're in the United States illegally, in the population used for apportionment. So what that means is, is that states like New York, Illinois, California, which have the largest illegal alien populations in the state, are having their congressional representation basically propped up by inclusion of alien populations. Yeah, New York is California are, are uh, uh, predicted to lose one seat each. If you took out the alien populations, New York actually would probably lose two seats. California might lose as many as four seats. And those extra seats they have, uh, they're cheating other states, which ought to be getting those seats. Because as you mentioned, it's a, it's a zero sum game, correct? Yes, exactly right. I mean, the number of uh, representatives in the House has not changed. So if one state loses a congressional representative, uh, another will gain. If this had been done after last, the last census in 2010, if we had done apportionment based on um, uh, citizen population, uh, Mon uh, Montana, which is finally getting a new seat, they would have gotten a new seat 10 years ago. West Virginia, which is going to lose a seat, would not be losing a seat if only citizen population were used. And you think in some ways this kind of incentivizes the, the border crisis that we currently have where That's some right. states might introduce sanctuary city policies or they may not cooperate with federal immigration authorities just so they can get those larger numbers when it comes around for the census time every 10 years. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Uh, this is an incentive for states like New York and California to obstruct federal uh, enforcement of our immigration laws and to make themselves into sanctuary jurisdictions, because if they do and they attract aliens, they're going to have more representation in the House, which is so bizarre because uh, illegal aliens aren't entitled to representation. They're not even entitled to be in the country legally. So then let's talk about how this even happened in the first place. President Trump, of course, he wanted the citizenship question put onto, onto right. the census uh, forms. However, of course, Biden then taking office, he, one of the first things that he does on January 20th is actually an executive order regarding the census count. Uh, talk to me about that and what it shows about Democrats and their agenda moving forward. Oh, I think it, it explains uh, why we're having this crisis, a Biden-created crisis on the border. It's like they want to flood the country with as many aliens as possible because, one, uh, they hope it helps them uh, get more political power in the House. But second, it also helps them, uh, they believe, uh, with an amnesty and a citizenship program, which, as you know, Joe Biden is pushing, that they want to turn those aliens into voters because they think it will help them solidify their power in Washington. 
And do you think it was surprising at all that given that California has almost 40 million people, of course we have many right. uh, people who are illegal immigrants who are living in the state of California, and yet even despite padding the numbers somewhat there, California actually still lost a seat. Do you think that's because of right. just the, the, the administrations that we've had under Governor Newsom over basically one party Democrat rule now for so long, high taxes? Were you surprised at all that California still lost a seat at the end of the day? Well, no, because remember, last year uh, they lost population for the first time since 1900. And it's because people are actually uh, voting with their feet. They're leaving California, again, as you said, because of high taxes and high regulation. Like I said, they would lose even more seats in Congress, not just one, uh, because so many people are leaving if it weren't for the fact that they're doing everything they can to attract illegal aliens to the state. And with all these changes now coming with different representations for these states, how do you think it might affect midterms coming up here next year? Well, remember, we've got apportionment, but we also have redistricting that's going to start happening as soon as those populations get to state legislatures. And based on the apportionment population and the fact that the Republicans actually control a majority of the state legislatures, uh, that means they will be the ones drawing uh, redistricting lines for congressional uh, districts. And so this hopefully will actually help Republicans gain greater control of the U.S. House and perhaps take over from the Democrats. Hans, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Sure, thanks for having me.